Good morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. So good to be back with you again this morning on this, the third Sunday in the season of Lent. Today we'll be focusing on a very familiar story to you. It's an encounter that Jesus has with a woman at the well. We're going to be using Divine Service 1 this morning. And that will begin on page 151. And uh, just one note, when I greet you after the service, please don't be offended if I don't shake your hand today. I picked up a little bit of a cold. And I know Christians are supposed to share a lot of things, but germs isn't one of them. So, <laughs> With that in mind, we welcome any visitors and guests who may be with us today. We hope you're blessed by God's word that you'll come back and worship here again and prayerfully consider joining Mount Calvary Congregation. Our worship begins with the singing of our opening hymn, hymn number 904, Blessed Jesus at Your Word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father.
Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority. I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. How lovely is your dwelling place. My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the strength from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith <coughs> to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Exodus in the 17th chapter. All the congregation of the people of Israel moved on from the wilderness of sin by stages, according to the commandment of the Lord, and camped at Rephidim. But there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people grumbled against Moses and said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt, to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. 
Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it, and the people will drink. So Moses did in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massa and Mirabah, because of the quarreling of the people of Israel, and because they tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans in the fifth chapter. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we also have obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us for while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is... The word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand as we sing the verse for Lent on page 157. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the fourth chapter. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. <clears throat> Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about the sixth hour there came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaria. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that was asking you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be, will never be thirsty forever. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. 
Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty forever. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. When I was a boy, every summer, my family would take a trip. Usually, because of my interest in history, it was to some historical location or a national park. 
Now, I have to confess, this was before the time that the uh, interstate highway system was completed. So we had to take a lot of state highways as we traveled. And as we did, I would always keep my eyes open. You see, I was looking for a little group of red signs with white lettering. I think some of you will remember them. They each contained part of a rhyme. A rhyme that went something like, passing cars when you can't see gets you a glimpse of eternity. And what's the next line? Sure, Burma shave. Yeah, see, some of you people are giving your age as well. You see, these rhymes provided a path of recognition to identify a product. Well, today in our gospel, we hear a series of descriptions that provide a path of recognition to the identity of Jesus. And it provides the answer to a quenchable thirst. Have you ever been thirsty? Really thirsty? Scientists tell us it only takes three days without water to die of thirst. We have all seen or heard of the effects of trying to live through a drought and people dying of dehydration. But there are many people right now who have a less immediate thirst, but a thirst that is no less deadly. Perhaps at one time or another you've experienced it in your own life. People feel a void an emptiness, something lacking in their lives. Even though it's filled with good things, maybe they can't identify it, but it's there. It's a spiritual thirst. I read once that Americans suffer from a condition called easy beliefism. People will guzzle spiritual drinks to the last drop, from so-called advisors or gurus. Yet every time they do, they're feeling the effects of spiritual dehydration. Now consider the woman in our text for today. This account features two people who are thirsty, who need their thirst quenched. One of them is Jesus. And I don't know about you, but you read these little statements like this, and it's somehow reassuring to see Jesus is really like us. He gets tired, and he needs rest. He gets hungry, and he needs food, and he too can become thirsty. He can identify fully with each one of us. But the other person in our story is the woman. She too comes to fill her jug, thinking to meet her physical need of thirst. But she has a far more deeper thirst that must be quenched. She has all the effects of a thirsty soul. She struggles with sin. Five husbands, and now she's living with a man whom she's not married to. She's isolated. She's an outcast in her own community, unable to experience the support of that community. She struggles with a vague notion of who God is, with an uncertain knowledge of the Messiah. She knows all about religion. She doesn't really know anything about faith. She knows where she can worship, but she doesn't really know who to worship. And so along comes Jesus to her to offer real thirst-quenching water. Jesus comes to that well because he's thirsty, but really 
Jesus always comes first to give rather than to receive. Now, he comes to this woman with a simple question, will you give me a drink of water? And immediately Jesus builds a bridge of connection. Oh, he certainly doesn't have to. After all, here he is, a Jewish male rabbi. There she is, a Samaritan female outcast. He could easily dismiss her. Jews didn't relate with Samaritans. But here is Jesus reaching out to establish a connection to this woman. He came with a simple question, but slowly, like a series of Burma shade signs, he leads this woman step by step into showing her who he really is. As we look at the progression in this discussion, it goes from, you're a Jew, to Sir, to hear a prophet, to finally seeing him as the Messiah. Oh, Jesus gives her what she needs in this process. He doesn't just say, I'm the Messiah, believe in me, and all will be well. You see, that doesn't work in your life or my life either. Sometimes to really see Jesus for who he is, we need to come to grips with who we are. And he says, simply bring your husband. Come on back, and I'll be happy to talk with you more. And he leads her to confess her situation, to confess her sin. I've had five husbands, and I'm not living, I'm living with a man, a, a live-in boyfriend. He gives her the law to show her situation, and then he gives her the gospel. Well, believe in me. Your past can be your past, but the present is the one who stands before you, the Messiah. He gives her what she needs to quench her real thirst, a thirst for forgiveness, a thirst for righteousness, a thirst for someone she can really believe in with faith. For the one who stands before her always stands before you and me. This is who Jesus is. Jesus is the prophesied Messiah. This is Jesus, who always builds bridges, not barriers, who breaks down walls of ethnicity, gender, and status. For as Paul says, there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for all are one in Jesus Christ. He came for everyone, to save everyone. Just think back on your own life, how Jesus led you on a path of recognition to see him for who he really is. For many of us, it began with a splash of water and the pronouncement of God's word. As the Holy Spirit shined into the darkness of our heart, even as an infant, to put there the image of the face of Jesus. And step by step, he shared with you his word so that our knowledge could expand and our faith could grow in seeing him as the promised one who delivers on every single promise he makes to you and me. And again today, with a sip of wine and a taste of wafer, we receive his very body and blood to assure us that our sins are forgiven, to reassure us that our faith is being strengthened, that we will always continue to see him for who he is, our Savior. For this is Jesus, who in his omniscience knows the deepest 
darkest secrets of your life and my heart and says to us, I know. I know you. I know everything you do. But come to me in repentance. And all those sins by which you've ever offended me are washed away, covered in my blood, sent away, never to be remembered again. Come to me, and I will satisfy your thirst for righteousness. This is Jesus, who in his wondrous love for us went to the cross to drink down to the very dregs the cup of wrath from God's judgment intended for the world, intended for us. And as he hung there dying in agony on that cross, he experienced excruciating thirst, dehydrating thirst of a crucified man as he cried out, I thirst! And then went on to experience the horror of hell for us. But as he died, he paid the ransom price for you and me. He shed his blood for you and me that we would be lifted out of the valley of sin and death and raised to the heights of heaven itself. For this is Jesus who rose again, guaranteeing on the last day that our bodies too shall rise from the grave and be led by Jesus to springs of living water, our thirst quenched, by our shepherd for eternity. You see, this morning, you and I are filled with that same living water as the woman that day in Samaria. We are filled to overflowing. We know what effect it had on that woman that day. She left her jar right there at the well, and she ran back to that town, and she told everyone what she had experienced. She led that community out to meet Jesus so that they too can see him as their Messiah. Do you know someone who has that kind of a thirst right now in your family? A friend, a neighbor. You can be the one to help quench that thirst. I would suggest if you have someone like that, write that person's name down on a piece of paper where you can see it every day. Pray for that person that they too could come to faith and then pray that you could be the vessel to share with them the life-giving water of eternal life in Jesus Christ. You know, as I considered this account this morning, I thought, hey, maybe the Burma shave approach would work. A woman with a jar, no water in it, now she carries inside living water, no limit, Jesus saves. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds focused on our Savior Jesus. Amen. At this time, I ask you to stand and confess the common faith we hold in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten before God and before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, 
begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. And note this morning that I will finish each petition with the words, let us pray to the Lord, and the congregation will respond, Lord, have mercy. For the church of all believers, that as she journeys through the wilderness of this life, she may drink only from the pure fountain of God's holy word and not seek nourishment from other sources. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all pastors in Christ, that they may faithfully preach the word of the Lord, rightly dividing law and gospel. And for all who hear their preaching, may hear it in faith and believe it. And that... The process continues to move smoothly here at Mount Calvary for the man that you have already selected to be their pastor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all who are troubled in their consciences and burdened by the memory of their sins, that they may be comforted by the peace we now have with God through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, while we were still sinners, justifying us before God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, the suffering, and the recovering, including this day, Jim, Judy, Ollie, Blaine, Brenda, Jean, Nathan, Reverend Eldor Harmon, Doris, Sandy, Patricia, Kenneth, Carol. We ask, Lord, that they may be granted health and healing as it pleases you, and that they may be comforted by God's love poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all who receive the gift of Christ's body and blood this day, that they may be granted to receive this holy supper in repentant faith for the forgiveness of their sins and the strengthening of their faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. It is now our opportunity to respond to the total love of our Father in sending his Son, Jesus Christ, for us to respond with our gifts and tithes.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we at all times and at all places give thanks to you, Holy God, Almighty Father, for sending your Son to come into the world to shed his blood as the ransom price, to restore us to you, to make us your family. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the hosts of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive renew and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us to faithfully eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do. In his own testament, gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, to you alone, O oh Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand. Our service continues with the post communion collect on page 166. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Our worship finishes with the singing of our final hymn, Go My Children with My Blessing.